In case you missed it, last week I put together an incredibly epic gaming PC build featuring the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics card and the AMD Ryzen 5950X CPU. Fortunately, we got all the work done in that video, so for today's video, we just get to have some fun, try out that gaming PC, and see what the actual performance is like. If you watched that video, you probably noticed that I also talked about giving that build away, and that is also kicking off today, so if you want to jump right to it, there's a link in the video description where you can enter. More details on just a second, but for now, I need to get the system set up so we can actually play some games. Excellent! So right from the top, I need to point out that AMD sponsored the build video, so a huge thank you to them for providing the parts, and a big thank you to Fractal as well for jumping in and providing the case, power supply, AIO, and fans. We're running the giveaway via gleam.io, so that link is down in the description if you guys want to enter. All you need to do is provide your email address and visit my YouTube channel page, and be sure to keep an eye out in about 10 days because I'll be announcing the winner on Twitter and also emailing the winner, and you have to reply within 24 hours or I will choose a new winner. Unfortunately, due to shipping concerns and regional limitations, this giveaway is US only, so my sincerest apologies to those of you who aren't eligible. I hope you can enjoy some gameplay, at least in the meantime. Speaking of which, before we get to some gaming, I'm gonna walk you guys through some quick system setup. So all I've really done here is plugged in the XMP profile for our memory, but actually before I even do that, I'm gonna use Gigabyte's QFlash utility to update the BIOS, which I've already downloaded onto an external USB, and that's it right there. This is a new motherboard from Gigabyte. It's the X570S variant, which means it doesn't have an active cooling fan. It's a slightly different variant of the X570 570 chipset and it shipped with BIOS version F1. So we're updating to the latest F3B which was released just back at the beginning of September and then we're going to enable resizable bar support. BIOS is updated successfully. We're on F3B now. I'm going to hit F2 to go to advanced mode. I'm going to go over here to settings and then IO ports and I'm going to enable above 4G decoding and resizable bar support. And I'm going to hit F10 to save and exit. Resizable bar support allows the 5950X CPU to access all of the graphics card's memory rather than just a small amount of it. And in most games, that can provide you with a decent little performance boost, anywhere from two to seven or eight percent. So with the BIOS updated and resizable bar support enabled, I've jumped back into the operating system. Uh, this, this background, by the way, is fan art uh, that I found over on Reddit of the Radeon 5000. So I'll link that in the description if you're interested. Just pulling up CPU Z real quick to validate some stuff, like we've got our, our processor installed, we've got our 6900 XT installed and specifically for the main board, then our BIOS is updated to that version F3B. So the first thing I want to do is get kind of a baseline of the system's performance, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to pull up the AMD Radeon software panel right here, which has received quite a facelift over the past few years. Just here on the home screen, you can see the game you last played and some recent games you can launch straight from there. This has media and capture integration now, so you can do screenshots, video recording, or even stream directly from this software. And then on the right side, you can see some basic info like what driver version you're running as well as your hardware that's installed. The other tabs across the top are gaming and this will show you all of the games you have installed. By the way, there's a known issue with this version of the software for the XTXH variant of the 6900 XT. For some of these, it's telling me that my 6900 XT does not meet minimum requirements, even though the performance grade is excellent. But do note here that you can set a specific profile for each game that will automatically apply once you just launch that game. And this gives you access to stuff like Radeon Anti-Lag, Radeon Chill, Radeon Boost, Image Sharpening. And if you're not sure what any of these do, you can just mouse over the little question mark. It will tell you, like Radeon Boost, for example, if you spin the camera around really quick while you're playing a first person shooter, it will dynamically reduce the resolution for an imperceptible hit to your image quality, but maintaining much better frame rates. Beyond that, there's the record and stream tab that you can use to just record local gameplay, or you can use it to live stream and you can uh, go live automatically. And then there is a performance tab, and I'm actually gonna be coming back to this in just a moment. But before that, I wanted to quickly show the settings tab. This has a bunch of other sub menus, so if you're looking for some more nitty gritty stuff, it might be varied in here. So you can set up graphics profiles for esports or gaming or power saving, for example. You can access display configuration and you can enable or disable FreeSync. I'm not using a FreeSync enabled monitor right now because I don't have a 4K FreeSync monitor, but uh, I did do some testing with Joe on a 165 Hertz FreeSync monitor, which I'll get to also in just a moment. But here again, you can set up video profiles for uh, movie watching and playbacking and that kind of thing. But you do have some other useful features like setting up hotkeys for specific tasks and uh, doing the specific setup again for recording and streaming. Let's go back to that performance tab though. The main screen here will just show basic metrics like your frame rates and uh, stats for your CPU and GPU. You also have tracking available over here and an overlay feature that you can just toggle on right here and it'll pop it up 
in the top right. You can do a simple text version of that, or you can turn on some graphs and meters, and you can adjust stuff like the size of the display, as well as uh, how many columns there are, if you want to be able to get a, a, a nice close look at your system performance while you're gaming. The second little sub-tab here under performance is tuning, and here I wanted to point out two specific things. One is that you can see right here if smart access memory is enabled or not. And this actually has the little brain icon indicating that this is a smart tool, uh, which are only available with systems powered by AMD APUs or CPUs paired with an AMD GPU. So the fact that we're using the 5950X and the 6900 XT is why this is showing up in that way. And it's also showing that it is enabled and you can actually disable that there if you want to. I also wanted to point out uh, GPU-Z, the mo more recent versions of that will also tell you if resizable bar is enabled or disabled. Resi resizable bar is sort of the generic term for it and smart access memory is AMD's branded term for it. So we just finished a run of Time Spy Extreme from 3 d Mark. Uh, our graphics score is 10,527. Uh, when I was testing the reference version of the 6900 XT, we scored 9,000. So that's uh, about 1,500 points higher than that previous score. Also, my CPU scores previously were around 8,000. That was with a 5900X rather than the 5950X, but that's also jumped up to about 8,700. Also note, during the graphics test, my GPU frequency was about 2400. It was bouncing between 2400 and 2450 or so, occasionally getting down into the 2300s, but that's a pretty good frequency right out of the box. So going back to my auto overclocking uh, functions here from the Radeon software, I've discovered it can be a little finicky here and there. So for one, like I said, you can either overclock the GPU with this button to give a GPU overclock, and we can see that reflected over here in GPU-Z, or you can hit overclock RAM and it will overclock the RAM in the same way, but it's only gonna do just the RAM, and you can see that also reflected over here in the memory. That's up to 2180, up from 2000. Uh, and then you would need to go and do manual custom tuning if you wanted to do anything beyond that. Now I did mess with this feature a little bit and this does give you some GPU tuning options. And then you can even go on he down here and flick on advanced control and that will allow you to uh, just plug in your maximum minimum frequency and all of that. However, once again, I was having a little bit of a difficult time getting that to take and getting me uh, a good result when rerunning my 3D Mark Times by Extreme test. So. I just went with the easy option and I clicked on Rage Mode because Rage Mode, if you don't know, is a bit of an auto overclock. And Rage Mode is a nice, easy, single click. It's gonna run your fans a little bit more aggressively. It's going to up the uh, power limits a little bit. It's not going to actually change your boost clock as reflected again by GPU-Z over here. However, I found that with Rage Mode on in some of my testing, I was still hitting uh, 2500, even 2600 megahertz frequency. So it's getting me right up there with what the manual overclock was suggesting. Here's a quick AB comparison, my initial Time Spy Extreme score was 10,204 with a graphic score of 10,527. And that jumped up a little bit, not too much, uh, but between a half a percent and 1% to 10,258 and 10,618. But again, when I was monitoring the frequencies I was running at when in games, I was definitely running at a higher frequency in raid mode than, by, than with the uh, default setting. So with the system set up and having dabbled with a few settings, I went ahead and jumped into some games. And the first game is Dirt 5. I'm playing at 4K because it's a 6900 XT so 4K is sort of the uh, sweet spot for it. 4K and 2560 by 1440 high refresh rate, but uh, we'll do some of that in a few minutes. Ultra high settings is what I was playing at here. And I'm using MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner to do an on-screen overlay here to show you guys some of the stats. And I'm using a separate system to capture the footage. So all we're testing on the actual system is the gameplay itself basically, and a little bit of overhead from running our monitoring software. The GP frequencies I was seeing was about 2430 to 2470 megahertz, and it was bouncing around a little bit but maintaining pretty stable clock speeds up in that range. Temperatures were very nice. The GPU is only getting up to 65. The CPU is only getting up to 58. And I'm not showing it on screen right now but the memory temperature the max it got up to was about 88 to 90 degrees Celsius. And that has been a concern for some of these higher end graphics cards if you're comparing the Team Red to Team Green GPUs. Memory temps hitting 100 to 110 degrees Celsius or even beyond that and potentially causing throttling has been an issue. So it's nice to see with our power color red Devil Ultimate card, the memory temps are staying within a reasonable range as well. CPU is also doing well with its all-in-one liquid cooler getting to around 58 degrees, and our average frame rate for this test was 105.9, so perfectly capable of a 4K 60 hertz display. And remember, also we're running the ultra-high video settings, so you could tweak that a little bit and reduce it if you needed to get a few more frames if you're trying to hit 144 hertz 4K, for example. Next up, we have Resident Evil Village, a nice snowy setting here, which seems appropriate since we're getting into 
fall and then comes winter. Again, we're running at 4K and we're using the max preset as far as the settings go, although this initial test is with ray tracing turned off. GPU frequencies, again, we're in the mid to high 2400 megahertz range, so similar to what we were seeing with Dirt 5. And the max temps were also in the same range, hitting about 65 degrees on the GPU and about 58 degrees on the CPU. Our average frame rates here were around 130 to 138 FPS, sometimes dipping down to 105 to 115 for the low range. Again, very good performance here given that we're running at 4k resolution and using the max preset for the video settings but this game also has the option to go and turn on fidelity effects super resolution so i went ahead and turned that on with the ultra quality setting which basically means it looks just the same as it does when rendering in native 4k and our average frame rate jumped by a decent amount uh, 40 or 50 frames per second getting to 180 to 190 and lows only down to about 140 to 160 and the highs sometimes got up to like 220 or 230 frames per second so again if you're thinking of pairing this card with a high-end 4K display, something that most graphics cards can't even push right now. 4K 144 hertz being the most accessible, I guess you might say right now. Uh, so nice to know that uh, FSR can give you that nice bump in frame rates. And you can turn on ray tracing in this game too. So I went ahead and did one more pass with that with FSR on to give us an average frame rate of about 105 to 115 FPS, lows in the 90 to 105 range, and highs up to 120 to 130. So I found this to be a nice A to B to C test to show you the default performance, the performance gain you can get by turning FSR on, and then the visual uh, improvements you can get by turning on ray tracing. Although those do often impact your frame rates, you can sort of get a nice balance in between by using both of those at the same time. And again, you'd have the option here to either lower the video presets or uh, switch the FSR quality settings if you needed more frames, if you suddenly came into a 4K 240 hertz display or something like that. Do, do they even have those yet? Here's a bit of Borderlands 3 footage. Again, we're running at 4K with the ultra preset for video quality settings and just running the built-in benchmark here to give a nice taste of the performance. With this game, the GPU frequency ramped up a bit. We actually hit about 2460 to 2500 megahertz and sometimes went even a little bit beyond that. Temperatures still maintained about the same. GPU was hitting 65 and the CPU was hitting about 64. Average frame rate here in the benchmark test is fluctuating between 65 and 75 FPS. Lows down in the 60s, highs getting above 80, um, but the benchmark average that it spat out at the end was 72.01. So again, perfectly adequate for 4K 60 Hertz gameplay. And again, you could mess with the video quality settings if you wanted to squeeze a few more frames out if you were playing on a higher refresh rate display. Next up is Far Cry 6, which just launched. And uh, here again, playing at 4K with the ultra presets. And again, just using the built-in benchmark here, which gives you a nice look at the visuals of the game. It's got the island setting, and I really like how the, the roads get wet and reflective, and uh, it, it's just a really cool looking game overall, I would say. At 4K with the ultra preset, we had a quite impressive GPU frequency, about 2550 to 2600 megahertz. That gave us an average frame rate between 80 and 90 with lows in the high 70s. Uh, our max frame rate was 93, and the benchmark average after the test ran was 83 frames per second. Again, well above 60 if you're playing on a 4K 60 display. And once again, I did a second pass here with FSR turned on using ultra quality for the preset, which basically gives you the same look as native 4K. And that bumped our average frame rate up to uh, between 100 and 115 FPS. Lows got down to the uh, eight, high 80s to the 90s. Max was 119 and our benchmark average was 101 FPS. For the final game testing, I brought in a ringer because I don't play Apex Legends very often myself, but Joe does, and he's actually pretty decent, even though he uh, plays in fits and spurts, so sometimes he plays for a long time and is really good, and then he gets out of practice, and then I and then I say, hey Joe, can you come and play Apex Legends for a video? And then he gets back into it and goes and plays a bunch again. But here we're also testing with the new Corsair Xenion monitor, so we're playing at 2560 by 1440, and this monitor has a 165 hertz refresh rate, as well as FreeSync Premium, so it's a really nice set of features to pair with a card like this. I also want to point out I'm not doing direct gameplay capture here. I am filming the screen as Joe plays, and that's because my capture cards use HDMI, and if you plug that monitor in via HDMI, it limits the refresh rate to 144 hertz. To get the full 165, you need to connect via DisplayPort. At first, we were trying competitive settings, like the mid to low settings that a lot of gamers like to use because it gets more frame rates and it removes some of the uh, extra visual detail and clutter from the game and lets you focus on uh, getting those headshots. But 
since it was so easily maintaining 165 frames per second with those settings, I told Joe to bump them all up, up to max, and then it was still at 165 FPS because our 6900 XT is just a beast and has more graphics horsepower to spare. So I went ahead and turned off V-Sync, and that's where we saw the actual frame rate that we would get with an uncapped frame rate, uh, fluctuating between 210 and 300 FPS, depending on the situation where Joe was gaming, how many headshots he was getting, if he was in the middle of a big firefight or not. So this is a great indicator to me that the 6900 XT is a great solution for high refresh rate 1440p gaming, uh, to say nothing of high refresh rate 1080 gaming, but there are 1440, 240 hertz monitors out there now. And with a game like Apex, which is a very popular uh, battle royale first person shooter, uh, the fact that it's getting 210 to 300 FPS means 240 hertz would easily be possible. And since a lot of the other games I tested today were just built in benchmarks, let's pause momentarily to appreciate that Joe's actually playing this game and he's not doing too bad either. Oh, they're down to two squads. They're the last, last of the two squads left and they won. Look at that. That's validation right there. That is proof that this is an epic build and an epic PC because Joe won his Apex Legends game. But that pretty much wraps up my testing for this system and I am quite impressed, uh, not just because of the actual gaming performance, which is hopefully demonstrated just now, but also the cooling performance of the case of the all-in-one liquid cooler from Fractal, of the cooling solution that PowerColor has put on their 6900 XT Red Devil Ultimate. They all did a fine job and they kept temps down so far that I wanted to spend more time overclocking with this system, but unfortunately I am out of time for right now and maybe that's something that the winner of this system can do instead. Because like I said, early on in this video, the giveaway is kicking off right now with the launch of this video. So if you're eligible, please check the video description down below for the entry link on gleam.io. And once again, to any of my international viewers who aren't eligible, I, I, wish, I wish I could offer this giveaway to you guys as well. But uh, shipping something like a system like this internationally is a lot easier to say than to actually do. So don't worry, you guys, I will be coming up with something for you as well in the future. If you are entering though, don't forget to use an email address that you actually check from time to time. And don't forget to check that email address in about 10 days when the giveaway ends because I'll be emailing the winner and you have 24 hours to respond to get back to me. Otherwise, I gotta set you aside and pick somebody else. And nobody wants to be the person who sees an email that says, you just won an awesome 5950X and 6900XT gaming PC, but that was like two days ago and you didn't respond, so you got bumped for somebody else. I'd like to say one final thank you to AMD for sponsoring this build and giving me the opportunity to give it away to you guys, as well as Fractal for providing all of the Fractal components that are installed as well. Here's one last look at it. Uh, it really is it really is a very pretty system and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all sorts of Paul's Hardware related merchandise, which is all very high quality. Best of luck to all of you who are entering. Thanks again for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.